fully retractable license plate by David J. Guyton at armortemplates.com. Um, there is one on the market today which uh, is very poorly made and has an ugly hinge sticking out about an inch and a half from the front of your bumper, which is just totally unacceptable. So I designed this one. I think it's much cooler and much better. Um, there's a template for it so you can make your own. I know it's not armor, but every time I make something cool, I want to show it to you guys and show you how I built it. So uh, if you want to do this yourself, give it a shot. Get your template by clicking under the video or in the video or going directly to armortemplates.com. You can pick this template up for free or I also have it set if you want to throw me a few bucks as a thank you, you can do that as well. Here you see I've got a couple of um, uh, measurements taken for the front of the car and you don't have to do this, I just did it because I had to design this thing. This is basically the front of the car if you imagine and uh, here's where the, where the bottom grill is, this is where the radiator is and uh, this is where the mechanism is going to work. This is much easier than working actually in the car, so that's why I built this. You won't have to do this though. This is how the plate will function, and this is the mechanism that I designed to make it work. It's a simple scissor mechanism. As you can see, you get a lot of motion out of very, very limited amount of um, initial motion, as you can see here. Two inches of travel gives you quite a long distance of travel. Most of the stuff's built out of uh, aluminum. This is uh, three quarter inch aluminum for the scissor pieces. And we want to round the edges too. We don't want them interfering and uh, snagging anywhere. These are nylon washers. By the way, all of this stuff is uh, available if you pick up the template or go directly to armortemplates.com. Um, you can have Amazon links to all this stuff, so it's easy to find. Three quarter inch bolts and also some lock nuts. A couple of the bolts will be a different size though, which I'll go over in the template. And basically you want to put washers in between everything um, to allow this to move freely. You don't want it to be super tight, but you also don't want it to be loose. You want to have a lot of play in it. I also use Loctite on these nuts as well, just to be doubly sure it didn't come apart. These are um, spring-loaded stainless steel hinges, and you'll see what they do here. Um, basically, they do not pull the plate up. They push the plate back down into a flat position when it's not being pulled on. So it's like this. And um, if you were to imagine this being the plate, this is how it works. So uh, the hinge is pushed down. This is uh, the, the hinge is welded to a piece of steel. You can choose to rivet them as well. You don't have to weld them. And you'll need to trim a little bit of your scissor mechanism to make sure it doesn't interfere with the rest of the bracketry and mechanism. These are a little, um, I use them as wheels, but they're more like, uh, they're like uh, pads that go on the bottom of chairs. Um, but as you can see, you can put a bolt through them and you can uh, use them as wheels, as I'll show you in a second. Um, this is basically just rounded off um, aluminum angle. And we'll mount these little wheels at the front of this little aluminum bracket. You can see how the wheel sticks up a little higher than the metal, and that's just basically so that it does not interfere with anything when the mechanism is extending and retracting. Works well. And I've got these little risers. This thing is upside down, by the way. Um, and I'm just putting in some, uh, some angled brackets to make sure it's nice and strong. This is what the plate will rest on when retracted, but it also uh, helps to hold it secure when it's extended. This piece is made out of uh, steel for strength. This will become the bracket for the linear actuator to bolt to the rest of the mechanism. You can see I got little score marks, and I'm going to just basically put it in a vise and bend them over. Um, there are probably better ways to, to do this and, um, you know, making simpler brackets, but this worked out just fine, so I'm okay with it. And it looks something like this in the end. It doesn't really matter where you put the bolt holes, um, just as long as it's held, uh, held tightly. As you can see, it, it rests on top of this aluminum angle. It's painted black, but it's aluminum, and that's where the actuator sits. And this is the linear actuator purchased on Amazon by a company called Servo City. It's a two inch, 115 pound linear actuator. 
these are a little bit longer bolts. These are one inch, I'm sorry, yeah, one inch instead of three quarter inch. And I've flattened the spot so I can drill out the top of them here, and you'll see why in a second. So with the mechanism extended, I have some cable here, some 1 16th cable. And uh, as you can see, these bolts have been replaced with the longer ones. And when this is fully extended, it will actually pull the plate up in the up position for you. And here's the wiring. It looks a lot worse than it really is, guys. It's actually very simple to wire. Um, these two in the center are your positive and negative for your linear actuator. These two are positive and negative as well, and these are the opposite, negative and positive. Very simple. And the, uh, this one here is for the light. Now for the light, um, we actually have to wire in a special um, limit switch, which is explained in the template, so don't worry about it being complicated, it's not. We also have to open the switch up and take this little spring out, and I will explain that in the template. It's so the light doesn't come on all the time, it's only on when the mechanism is up. And once you have figured out how to mount it in your car, that's on you because uh, all cars are different. Um, you've actually pretty much finished this whole thing. So very simple, very elegant. As you can see, I've got a piece of the piece of the grill that I actually cut out. I use as the top of the license plate frame, so it's completely hidden away, completely invisible, and it's totally awesome. Oh, for off-road use only, too, guys. Uh, these are probably illegal in your area. Uh, if you like uh, watching people make stuff, I make armor. This is what I normally do on my channel. So if you want to see any of that stuff, check out my other videos. And also pick up any of my templates to make any of this stuff from my website, armortemplates.com. Find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash armortemplates. Give the page a like. Make sure to talk to other armorers and builders on the website. And thanks, guys. See you next time.